the Metal Mixtape here on KSQ 89.5 FM Ashton, Oregon, 94.1 FM Medford, Oregon, streaming all out on KSQ.org. It's the boy, it's the Don DJ Rambo. And tonight we have Cam from Ultimatum. Cam, how's it going? Good, brother. How are you doing, Omar? Dude, it's a beautiful Sunday. It's Mother's Day. It's, it's, yeah. it's you know, uh, I'm celebrating all the mothers out there, of course, dude. But uh, it's great to talk to you, man. And and what's cool is that about our conversation today is that uh, this is our first time us ever seeing each other, mm-hmm. us, us ever talking and getting to know each other, which is great because um, we get to learn a little bit about each other. So, um, you know, I've listened to Ultimatum, the new album, Born in the Afterglow. I've listened to In My Blood, Run From You. But here's the thing. I want to get to know a little bit about Cam, man. Absolutely. But, you know, because, 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 because we can talk about the music, I, I could, you know, but I, I, I want to tell people, you know, I want people to know where, where it resonates from, you know, where, where it grows from, where it's coming from. So, so Cam, um, um, tell me um, maybe like where you got your influences from when you were younger, maybe from a friend, somebody gave you a guitar, maybe, maybe, maybe your whole family, is just a bunch of musical geniuses. <laughs> like, 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 where did this whole magical journey start for you, man? Absolutely, man. No, that's a great question. We actually, I was at the studio last night with my drummer and my producer, and we were having a similar conversation where we were taking a stroll down memory lane. And um, it was actually, it started in grade eight for me. Um, one of my okay. good um, school friends, he had a guitar and he was getting really good really quickly. Right. And okay. uh, so I was starting to become a little bit envious, right? Because I've never played the guitar <laughs> I'm watching him shred all these solos and I'm like, where is this coming from? Right. So he put his guitar in my hands and he taught me smoke on the water. Right. I'm sure that's everyone's like first riff or something yeah, along those lines. Yeah. Yeah. That's a popular one. So, and I bug right there. It was, um, it was something that, that kind of, it was that instant feel of the guitar and what, how I was able to express my own feelings and emotions through this, through these six strings. Right. Yeah. Um, so of course I had to get a guitar. So I bought this little cheap Washburn guitar with a miniature amp, right? <laughs> and, and that started my whole entire journey. And uh, it's interesting too, because if my friend never gave me that guitar, this band wouldn't be in existence because I was the founder of the group. And uh, my drummer, Brendan Byers being the co-founder, and we we started this thing in grade nine, right? So oh, it was um, it was one of those things, right? And then it just snowballed from there where it was, Um, you know, it was playing with him. It was about, it was about, I listened to a bunch of different players too. Like I listened to a lot of English music, like the, you know, priest maiden, like that was kind of, you know, a heavy influence in my early days and Zeppelin. So anything from the, you know, from the, actually from the sixties all the way to present day. Right. And, um, I listened to everything from like blues to jazz, to like hard rock, to new wave, screamo music, techno music. So I'm kind of all over the board when it comes to just, just my styles. But um, it started, like I said, it started with that guitar and it started with my dad's record collection as well. Like that was something that I kind of fell deeply in love with. Yeah. Yeah. So from there, Brendan and I, we, you know, we caught the bug and he and I had this incredible chemistry where we didn't have to speak. We just got in the same room and we could play for hours, right. Just guitar and drums and, um, then we had James Cole, our bass player, brought on and Sam Mook, our singer, just after high school. Um, so from that point on, that just kind of started, you know, our whole reign in the local music scene in Thunder Bay, Ontario. And um, we were just a part of the live circuit. So we played, you know, we did a lot of headlining shows throughout the city. And this was prior to, you know, us getting involved with our record label from the Depths Entertainment in Reading, Pennsylvania. So, um, you know, it was, it was primarily being sponsored by a lot, a lot of local ven- venues and, um, also local companies as okay. well were sponsoring us. And we were starting to gain a lot of traction in the local scene before we were able to actually get it in the international realm as well. So, That's awesome. um, yeah. Well, Cam, um, you, you know, you're telling me, uh, you've been, you know, you started this band, uh, grade eight or nine. How old are you, man? How, how, how long has Ultimatum been around? Because I don't know if you're like 19 and you've been out for four years or, or <laughs> you're 32. Or, uh, I'm uh, actually, I'm 31, so you're close. So 31. So, yeah, I'm, 30, I'm 32. I was like, I was like, I think I'm a little bit more haggard than he is. And he has better <laughs> too. <so. laughs> yeah. No, no so, yeah, dude, dude, you've been in this band forever with Brendan. That's awesome. You guys is, you guys, is, you know, I can tell, man, because when you're playing for somebody for that long, you have this crazy chemistry. I guarantee any time in the any time you want, you could literally just start a, a quick jam session with Brendan. 
and yep. literally play whatever you want for hours without trying. Totally. Exactly. Exactly. And we were both very heavily influenced at that time, especially around like 80s music. Like we were kind yeah. of big into the 80s hair thing and, you know, this, that British invasion sound. And um, so he and I bonded over that. That was like the one commonality. Like we all, we all have a lot of different musical influences across the four of us because there's four musicians in the band, um, which I think creates, you know, such an interesting, unique, organic sound when we play our Agreed. own music. Agreed. But but at the same time, though, having said that, it's like it's, you know, it depends on what month it is. Right. Because I'm listening to all sorts of music and I'm always inspired by things too, Omar, like not even just music, but just my surroundings and the people I'm having conversations with. And so it's uh, it's interesting. It's interesting. But we don't we don't kind of, um, you know, associate with one specific sound. We're kind of all over the all over the you know, the range of different musical styles and influences. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know what? It's it's important, man, because, uh, um, and, you know, like st uh, stylistically, you can learn from so many styles to even like open up your voice different, you know, or 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 or, or a different technique on the guitar you weren't used to, like that, that you might want to use later. You know, I always say like learn all the different styles because imagine like saying like you're a chef, and you're this like great cook, but you only can cook one style of food. You're, <laughs> you're, 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 it doesn't make you a great cook. It makes you a great cook at cooking Italian because that's all you know. You yeah. know, but, but like learning all these multiple styles, like like let's say like like if if you played all these style, like heavy metal and flamenco and all that, and then you decided to go, you know what? I'm 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 gonna put out like a Killers album, you know, you know, like like I'm I'm gonna put out a like a like Cuban by them. But the thing is, you're gonna have all that skill set to be like, I I could switch up this beautiful chord into something a little crazy that I learned from a little technique. You know, there's all these little things, you know. So, like, um, so um, do you pull influences? Like, I mean, I, I know you say you listen, to, you pull it from everywhere, but uh, do you, do you pull guitar influences from other genres too? Yeah, yeah. It was Jimmy Page initially was like my heavy kind Ooh. of hero right at the, you know absolutely and slash and um you know but i also listen to a lot of different people like i listened to Lin lindsey buckingham from pink Flo or um from <laughs> fleetwood mac right he had a lot of that finger picking style and gilmore from you know pink floyd and um so i listened to a lot of that or even alex lyson a fellow canadian guitar player from rush right so um yeah i listened to a lot of that initially but that that has changed right like i I listen to a lot of like the different, you know, even metal core stuff or, you know, metal, like new age metal stuff. And um, I listen to a lot of the blues players too, though. Right. And a lot of the jazz, I'm, I'm always impressed to watch jazz guitar players and flamenco, like you mentioned too, one more like flamenco guitarists. Like it's just a whole other realm, but I try to, you know, especially in the early days, I tried to be like a sponge and absorb as many different influences as possible. And I think what that's done is it's created this own kind of unique unspoken style that we have that you just kind of have to listen to. And that's the one exciting thing about having these interviews, you know, with yourself or different radio stations and magazines. And people have a hard time putting their finger on what it is we sound like, you know, and anytime they describe us, it's, it's, they're trying to compare us to other artists, which is, which is great and super flattering, but they can never pick one artist that we sound like, which I think is interesting. So. Uh, emotionally driven, uh, atmospheric, uh, uh, rock and roll. Yeah, that's a good way to sum it up. Yeah, totally, <laughs> totally. <laughs> that, 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 that would that would be my uh, definition. I love it. Like, I'm gonna, I might adopt what? that actually. <laughs> oh yeah, like, like 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 if John Lennon got hit by Saturn, that's what you guys would sound like. <laughs> oh man, that's that's a huge huge compliment. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, so, dude, um, um, ultimatum, dude. You guys are completely fresh to me, dude. Um, um, I, remember, I think I played you guys. She's like she's like Mother's Day. I'll go back. Um, but dude, uh, this is a, a a super unique style. I um I really love it. Like um um you know I was listening to your um uh, um older song too, um who I've become. Mm -hmm. You know I, I I was you know because um I, I listen to your new stuff, listen to your old stuff. So so when you and Brendan got together, what was was this always your vision? And also from the year the artist standpoint. Explain to me what your vision and and what you're trying to express yourself as in your music ultimatum. 
Well, that's, yeah, that's, that's an interesting question because initially Brendan and I started out with just kind of like the like heavily hard rock up tempo influenced music. Right. And that was kind of our vision, right? It was just trying to define and figure out what our sound was going to become. Um, but with, we have a studio here in Thunder Bay, Thunder Sound, Sound Studio as well. And we also have our own producer. And so we, we have that luxury of being able to literally go into the studio at any time, um, experiment with different sounds, which I think has really helped, right? So like who I have become that, that song in particular, it was, that was when we were in a bit of a growth phase. Yeah. yeah, thanks, man. Thank you. Yeah, we were in a bit of a growth phase where we were starting to now get a little more into the ballad side of things and experiment that we don't want to pigeonhole ourselves or put ourselves in a corner. We want ultimatum to be as experimental and creative as we want it to be. Right. Like we don't want to be branded one style of music per se, but um, you know, and it's interesting because even you, you mentioned born in the afterglow, that album, like I'm, I'm incredibly proud of because it is very atmospheric and it's got, we tried to be super dramatic and creative with that one, especially um, but you know, a lot of the reviews on that one were, were positive, but we wanted to take it in a different direction now where we wanted this new album that's coming out later this year, uh, in my blood. Um, it's very, very up-tempo, dancey, very catchy. It's interesting because we've infused a lot of techno elements with this, like almost made any style guitar harmonies with this intense drumming. And these like super poppy, catchy vocals on top. And yeah, yeah, I like it. Yeah. I like the mixing, man. The mixing of everything is beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah, because it's it's interesting because we we wanted to put that song "Run from You" out first because we wanted it because it's just so different than anything that we've ever heard, right? And we were just excited about it. We have another single dropping actually on May twentieth. Um, so just in a couple of weeks, we're going to be dropping the title track "In My Blood," which is kind of more the radio friendly, up tempo. Once again, very similar to Run From You in the sense of having the electronic side of things peer in. Um, but once again, it doesn't really sound like anything, but it's super, super catchy. Um, so this album is the antithesis of what we just did, basically. It's like super up-tempo, super driven, incorporating a lot of those ambient kind of guitar sounds and, and everything else like that. But we just really wanted to kind of create something that was very driving, um, very, very catchy um, in terms of people kind of humming along to it and it getting stuck in people's heads. That was kind of what we designed, the, especially the choruses to sound like. And a lot of the subject matter is around kind of like relationships, you know, like like how relationships at times can be so so perfect, but they can also be so destructive. And, you know, everyone, I think everyone can relate to that. That's a topic that everyone can relate to. Yeah. So, um, but we really wanted to get super, like the writing the music for this album was really fun just because it was so crazy at times that we're just, we were just looking at each other and we were so excited about what we just created. Right. And we're, you know, we're so happy to share that with the rest of the world and all of our listeners and everything like that. So um, to sum it up in one word, I, I couldn't really, or even one sentence, I couldn't really do it. It's our sound is forever changing and growing. Um, and it, and it usually is influenced by whatever the four of us are listening to at that time. So. No, I, I like it, man. Um, I, I like how you were saying, you know, with, with this album, you know, um, you want to try it it's a little different. You're saying, you know, you're going to more like, you know, it's fast up tempo, a little bit of dancey style to it and everything. But, you know, um, with the, with the, with the maiden, maidenish uh, riff structures, like, I think that's totally sick. Like, since, it, since you're trying to, like, try something different and go in a different direction, is this something you're going to try to do every album? Is just trying to do something different or... Or, or you think the next one might be along the lines of in my blood? Um, well, yeah, we the thing the thing we don't want to lose is we don't want to lose that kind of um, signature sound that we've developed. Yeah, right? yeah. But but we don't. It's funny, Omar, because we don't even that's not a conscious conversation we have when we go into the studio. <laughs> right, right. We just we throw yeah, that yeah. Out the window and we, we get really kind of creative with it. We don't think too much about the last project. Um, we're aware of reviews and stuff like that, like that, that we get and just kind of how people perceive our music, but essentially we're writing music for ourselves. Right. And exactly. we know that there's an audience out there that we can share it with. So um, we never lose that signature ultimatum sound from one project to the next, but we do make creative choices in terms of where we're going next. Right. So I had this conversation actually with uh, a magazine the other day and I was thinking about that. Like what, what is the next thing that we're going to do after this? Cause we're very, we're very prolific in the sense of we drop an album and then we start working on one right away. And then we drop another album and we kind of, you know, we move at kind of a fast pace in that regard, but uh, it'll be interesting. I think once again, we'll have a departure from in my blood and we'll go to a completely different direction next time. Right. Where 
it probably will sound, you know, it'll take influences from born in the afterglow and in my blood, but it'll become something completely different as well. Right. So. Yeah, no, uh, no, absolutely, man. And uh, it's, it's crazy. It, it, it could be like really risk taking too, you know, when, 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 when you want to try something different because it's, yeah, it, it's weird. It's definitely something where you can't like, where, where you kind of just have to like write the music and everything and just let it speak for itself. Cause Honestly, man, like with like reviews and everything, like I've been asked to do reviews and do all that. And for me, it's, it's almost impossible to do it for the, for the reason that um, any, any normal human being will go into a buffet and not like a couple items. Right. And, 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 and the thing is, I, I never see, like with music, I never see it as like, if it's not my style, it's not good. If it's not my style, it's just not my style. It doesn't mean it's not fantastic. Absolutely. You know what I mean, like, like, so for me, it's like, I've, I've grown to have a little bit more of respect for the musician first. And then I listen to the music later. Cause I, cause if a band sends me a record, I'm just like, you know how much time it takes to record a record. You have to be in the studio. You have to get your instruments all intonated, all that, like respect to you for just doing the grind. You know? It might, it might not be my cup of, cup of tea, some artists, but I'm just like, dude, but dude, you killed it though. You, the, everything's great. Like you're amazing. Like, like, like if, if I was into Korean pop, I'd be buying your record right now. This is amazing. <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah. No, I know. But um, I think that's cool with ultimatum that like, you know, um, you guys are growing as musicians. You guys have been together for so long that, you know, I, uh, w- w- what do you think if you could say, uh, what's the biggest difference that you and Brendan and maybe everybody in the band learned from how you started the band and how you are now, what, what do you think's the biggest thing you guys matured on? Oh man, that's a great question. I think um, the biggest, I think our sounds matured a lot. I think as human beings, because we started when we were so young, um, I think we've we've matured, right? So I think that naturally comes out in the music and our life experiences and everything that we've gone through, I think, you know, both, you know, musically and personally, I think that's really kind of helped us, you know, build this kind of cool um, connection that we, that we have now, like a brotherhood basically. Right. And I think that that translates into the sound, right? Like um, it's, it's interesting though, because in like, when we started the band, we were like local, you know um, you know, we were on the circuit here and that was a big thing because we were playing all these live shows, playing all these last band standing shows. And at the time we couldn't even get into half of these bars because we were underage. Right. So the promoters would, would pull us in and stuff like that. And it was really, really cool. And then, you know, we did an Ontario tour. And when we got back from that tour, we um, got some offers to do some magazines. And then we also uh, got a, got in contact with our record label from the Depths Entertainment and they pushed us over in Europe. Right. So then we started, oh, yeah. Air, yeah, we started getting airplay in Scotland and, you know, we started to do all these different magazines and these radio stations over there. And then it kind of came back to America where we were really heavily kind of focused on that then. Right. So we kind of departed from the local scene to some degree and we went to the studio and, and wrote all these albums and then, we would do these kind of press releases. So it's, it's kind of changed in that respect too, where I think we've grown as, as even recording artists, because there's such a massive shift between playing live and playing in the studio to a metronome. Right. And and I remember that. I remember that I'm like, Oh, this is going to be a breeze, right? Like, We've played so many shows, you know, I feel super confident. We're tight, right? And then yeah, I get in the studio, that. yeah, and my producer starts turning on this metronome and I am struggling, Omar. Like, I'm like, I am like, holy crap. And then I realized how undisciplined I was as an artist, right? So, but you learn, right? These are things you learn. And, and we started growing as musicians. And that's the other thing, too, I think that we've picked up along the way is we take risks. We're a band that takes risks creatively. Totally. And we have to appease ourselves first and foremost. And the way I see it, there's four musicians and there's our producer and uh, Russ Elder in Thunder Sound Studio. And then there's also Richard Lawrence, who's our web designer. Um, so it's like there's six members of us, right? So I know that when we appease all six of us, I know that what we have is going to reach a market outside of that because we're very critical and hard on ourselves. So um, yeah, just, just having that sound grow and mature and just taking those risks and trying to create something cool that we're all very excited about and then sharing that with the world, I think is something hugely, hugely important. Right. So, um, we don't like before, I remember in the early days when we started recording, we were super critical. Like we didn't take a lot of risks because we just wanted to get it right. And now we're just like, you know, I love making dramatic experimental. So, uh, so, uh, so uh, tell me, tell me something. What's sure. a risk for you in the studio? 
compared to uh, you not taking a risk? A risk, a risk for us in the studio is just writing something that we've never heard before. I think, right? Oh, like, so, so maybe something like uh, uh, your fans have not experienced. Yeah, yeah, or something that we haven't experienced. Like, I want to okay. write music that we've never heard, right? Like, I want. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to kind of replicate something we've done before or something that somebody else has done. I want to write something that literally I can't compare to anything. Like, I can Ooh. pick up influences in there, but I can't like. I want to bring something to the musical landscape. I don't want to just be one of those artists that, you know, profits off of it because we sound like ACDC, ACDC for example, or whatever, right? Like we, nothing yeah, wrong. I, I, I love I, ACDC, I, but. I, I, know, I know what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Because like right now, you know, like uh, Deathcore is really popular. So a lot of people are like Deathcore, uh, just playing Deathcore. Yeah. You know, I, I know what you mean. Instead instead of like just jumping into the 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 same lake, everybody's, with inner tubing on, you're, you're jumping down a different path, you know? Yeah. We're trying to create our own lake. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And, uh, and that's the thing we've never been, we've never been like, I've always been into whatever, like I've always had my ear to the ground in terms of whatever was popular at, you know, at the time, but we've never been a band that has really kind of, you know, jumped on the bandwagon of what's current or what's relevant just, just for the sake of doing it. Right. Um, you know, I know, I know some other bands, I won't mention any names or whatever that did, did that right. Where it was like, you know, that whole metal core thing was huge. And then it went a little bit more into the alternative side of things. And you see all these artists that are kind of adapting to, and that's great. I don't get me wrong. I, I think that's really, really cool, but we've never been a band to do that. We've always kind of been very true to our art. I think it's important that, you know, we first and foremost, we're artists, right. Um, and that artistic integrity that we have is really vital first and foremost, right. And, and, and creating something authentic. Like my, I know my singer and I, we get together and we have these conversations prior to writing an album and just to make sure that we're kind of both on the same page creatively. And then we just let it happen organically where we start creating ideas and seeing what fits, what doesn't fit, you know, and getting rid of songs, adding songs. Like we, we're a, we're a band that likes to write, you know, solid albums to, to our standards, right. Versus just the single here and there. We want to write like, we want to take the listener on the journey. So when they listen to the album from start to finish, it transports them into somewhere else. I love it. Dude, that, that's great, man. I, I love how in depth you are in your music, dude. And and I think everybody is going to be super excited. Um, dude. So uh, before we get, so final question, before we get to the second part of the interview, um, where can everybody find, um, your music and and if there was a song you'd recommend to them to listen to first, what song would it be? Oh man, okay, <laughs> that's a great question. Um, hey, thank you. You told me I've had four great questions today. Yeah. I, I just woke up. <laughs> All of them, because you're, you're making me think, right? You're making me think, and I love the conversation. Hey, this, this is like this is like my 500th interview, so uh, <laughs> I'm like I'm like I'm like I'm like using new stuff on you. Nice. I love it, man. I love it. Um, so where they can find us, I mean, our, uh, we're on all music streaming platforms. It's spelt, you know, A-L-T-A-M-A-D-U-M, -A -A -A, a little bit differently. Um, but you can find us on, you know, Spotify, Apple Music, any of those. Um, we have our own website, ultimatum.com, um, spelt just the same way. Um, and then also, too, our Instagram is something that we really leverage to kind of communicate with other people artists and other media outlets and you know our label and radio magazine and stuff so if, if anyone wants to get into contact with us the best way to probably do that is through through our instagram and we love we welcome that we love it we love having conversations with different people kind of from all over the world kind of like what we're doing right now i've really i really get a kick out of that right so That's awesome. uh yeah, absolutely and then in terms of the song i've always loved this song and it's not one of you know, it's, it's probably one of our staples. It's, it's called Apollo. Um, and it is something it's in the same vein of who I have become. It's just longer. And I, the reason I love it is because I really worked at building the guitar solo at the end and constructing it. It almost starts out with a flamenco acoustic solo that goes into yeah. this big guitar, electric guitar solo. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And it was one of our, the first songs that my singer Sam Muka and I got together and we kind of wrote after he joined the band and it was one of the first songs that our producer actually captured. So it was, it was just a magical kind of moment. And it's just, I don't know. It just, it makes me feel some, some sort of way. Right. So if I'm ever introducing our music to somebody, I usually start with Apollo or who oh, I have become in terms of like that easy listening thing. 
but in terms of like you know my favorite album probably still is born in the afterglow i think that that one that the last album that we did it was just because just because it was so you know so different and uh, i just felt like we were all in a very creative headspace so if i had to pick a song i would probably say apollo if i had to pick an album i would say born in the afterglow start to finish is my favorite album that we've created so far i love it cam i love it all right man um, ultimatum we're talking to Cam. Uh, i'm gonna throw you a bunch of fan, uh, fun questions we're sure. gonna try to answer them um as fast as possible we got about like three minutes left in this interview cam are you ready absolutely let's do it all right in, in a zombie apocalypse you only could have one weapon to destroy the zombie horde it can't be the cure or a nuke what is that one weapon to kill zombies shotgun if you could play in any band in any era dead or alive for one set what band are you playing with uh, Led Zeppelin or the Smiths, probably. Oh, you're, good. Yeah. Right, you're good at this. All right. <laughs> if, if, you, if you could choose your death, but it had to be by a villain in a horror movie, who would kill you and how would they kill you? Uh, probably. I've been into horror movie like Freddy Krueger. I've been watching Nightmare on Elm Street again. So probably Freddy Krueger with that fit, that hand that he has with all the <laughs> knives. <on it. laughs> dude, dude, I love it. Hey, um, uh, I love you're from Canada, right? Yeah, Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada. I, there's so many awesome things. Hey, you want to know my favorite show is from Canada? Yes, it's at Trailer Park Boys. I love it. Love I've it. Watched, I've watched <laughs> all. I've watched all. I've watched all twelve seasons like a hundred times. Amazing. Yeah, that's a and, good show. Hey, my, my favorite vocalist is from Canada too. Who's that? Brittany Slays. Yes. Yes. Unleash the Archers. Yeah, they're amazing. Did you? He's and uh, my favorite comedian is from Canada, Jim Carrey. Love it. Love it. I love all of that. Yeah. <laughs> it's Wait, hey, um, well, uh, last thing, man. Um, have, have you guys played out of the country at all? We, we, no, I guess we haven't. No, we've never actually played a live show out of Canada. You, you guys plan on doing that uh, maybe in the future? Absolutely. Yeah, we're, we're open to anything, Omar, that makes sense, right? Like if, if it ever made sense for us to actually go somewhere else to, to play a show, we're, we're 100% down for that, so. Cool, man. Well, well, I'll keep that in mind, dude. I'm a promoter. If you guys ever come down the West Coast, uh, hit me up and uh, I'll give you guys all my contacts. That would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. We'll stay in touch for sure. Cool, because I, I, I think I got from like the Bay Area up to like Seattle. I could help you guys with. So. Oh, beautiful. Amazing. <laughs> amazing. Well, Cam, that, yeah. well, go ahead. No, that's the that's the one silver lining to this whole COVID thing, Omar, is like, you know, like it's funny because I, I, we, we love doing the touring thing. We love all of that, but, but just the amount of people we were able to reach during COVID just through, oh, like, yeah. this, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, and, and we were able to write two albums during COVID and then have all these different, you know, conversations with people, you know, on radio stations and magazines and stuff like that and, and connect with other artists around the world. It's like, it shrunk the globe for some, you yeah, know, and it it's, it feels like we're all one community in the in the music in the international music scene right now, right? Like even you and I being able to sit down and have this awesome conversation. It's yeah. like it's a huge, huge honor, man. So I like I said, I appreciate you having having me uh, on on behalf dude, of the band. Hey, you know what? Hey, the, the way I see it, man, we're we're we're, uh, we're both musicians, and 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 what, what, the way I see interviews, man, is that we're just we're just bouncing positive energy off of each other. Hundred percent. Yep. Yeah, I mean, because, because dude, it's it's insane. Like, you know, uh, um, the, the I don't know, like I don't know if I necessarily believe in karma. I mean, sort of, but the thing is, I do believe in energy, and I do believe if you put like enough positive energy out there, that it will come around as long as you're patient. 100%. You know, yeah. But it's like, hey, dude, I I gotta hear about what you love, man. Uh, we got to we got to know each other, and now I'm even more excited to air this interview beautiful i'm excited to hear it omar absolutely well sweet man um cams thank you so much for being on the metal mix tape everybody please go check out ultimatum um uh i can't wait to for everybody to hear this man it's gonna be sick and i can't wait for all your new stuff uh any last shout outs before i let you go uh shout outs not not really uh shout out to our record label more or less our producer our web designer you know and uh yeah i just shout out to everyone who's listened to our music lately and taken the time out and listened to the new single and we have another single dropping like i said in my blood may 20th mm -hmm. all platforms so look out for that and um, message us on on instagram and like i said i love having the conversations love connecting with different people all over the place and it's uh it's been an absolute pleasure buddy for sure Dude, Cam, much love. We'll talk soon. I'll be sending you the promotion flyer here here uh, this afternoon. You have a great fucking night. 
Absolutely, brother. You too. We'll talk soon, Omar. Sounds good. Peace, man. Hey, brother.